Okay, welcome to my first podcast, or our first podcast. It's me and John here. Hey. John and I are, well, we decided to, to start this new thing. It's always been in my mind you know to start a, to start a podcast so because we don't live in uh, Europe or in this case we're not in US right now we live in Taiwan we get so many questions about this virus coming from China the coronavirus um, we get you know our families are worried I know my family is worried same yeah so we decided we're gonna talk about it today and uh, talk about our um, experience yeah of staying alive yeah in Taiwan <laughs> so we don't live in China just want to make sure that you guys know this is not China we are in Taiwan so things are different here but still we want to talk about how we feel here right now in this moment so let's start with some facts John I just want to read what you just wrote five minutes ago for me <laughs> So in China, there are currently 6,000 people infected. Confirmed cases. Confirmed cases. It could be more, honestly. Yep, that's uh, frightening. And uh, 132 deaths at this moment. Today is Wednesday. So far, only people in China have died from this. Exactly. Everyone else is just... Infected, yeah. confirmed, but uh, no one died outside of China. In Taiwan, the country where we live now, uh, it's five confirmed cases, the same number as the US. In Thailand, we've got 14 people. Hong Kong, eight. Singapore, South Korea, Malaysia, four people. France, four people. Japan, seven people. Canada, three. Vietnam, two. And then we've got Germany, Cambodia, and Nepal, one person infected. These are the stats. Now, the first question that I have for you, John, is how do you feel right now here living in Taiwan? Well, I'm not coughing, I'm not sneezing, so that's a good start. <laughs> I feel pretty safe because the Taiwanese people are pretty sensible about hygiene. They're always washing their hands, they cover their faces with a mask if they're feeling sick. The one thing that concerns me is we use a lot of public transit here. So it's not like you can get in your car and drive places. You have to go on a bus. You have to touch poles. You have to put your butt on other people's seats. And honestly, if you just wash your hands after being on public transport, don't go sticking your hands on your face or anything. You should be fine. Yeah, we are expats here. So a lot, most of us don't own a car or a motorcycle. So we use public transport a lot. As you said, we use the metro system. We use buses. And uh, it is, I've seen some changes in the last three to four days. Uh, I've seen more, more masks around. A lot more That's masks. for sure. Still, I feel people are not worried about it. I've seen more masks, but I, I still see on public transport people that really don't care. Coughing without a mask. Yeah. I, uh, I've seen that. Completely triggering. I've seen that. And um, the question I asked myself is, uh, I read on some, I read online that uh, at the beginning in uh, Wuhan, the, the city where everything started, people didn't think it was a big deal. And, and as you can see, it is a big deal. <laughs> um, I just feel like Taiwanese people, as you said, are, are cleaner. Uh, they care more about their, their public public hygiene yeah but still i feel like they could do something more. more like what like for example those people who don't wear a mask in the public transport what what are you thinking i honestly never used to wear masks yeah me, me neither but now i do yeah it's ironic yeah uh, that's the biggest thing is the masks usually we're pretty if i post a picture of myself wearing a mask on social media i instantly get dms from family and friends back home they're like are you okay what's wrong you have cancer and it's basically just like no that's just the culture here if you if you're sick you wear a mask and yep. so we make ourselves wear masks but the weirdest thing is to go on uh, the metro and see 90 percent of people wearing masks yeah that's 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 what what's different now what changed yeah so let's talk about masks for a second um as you said I, I mean my friends and family it's basically the same thing when they see me wearing a mask they ask me what's wrong or they ask me is the pollution really that bad yeah. um yes by the way <laughs> it's pretty bad it's not as bad as 
like news yeah true say, report like I, i'm pretty sure in some cities in china it's a hundred times worse than here can uh, confirm so guys when you see those um those videos uh, in the news of like cities where you cannot see the sky it's not it's really not like that it's not taiwan that's probably china and it's not even every day just right. to let you guys know um but yeah pollution it's it's a big problem, but masks. So why do Taiwanese people wear masks usually? The main reason is super safety and superstition, I'd say. A lot of kids I see who wear masks, or even adults, they just wear it over their mouth, but not their nose. And it's like, they think if you have a mask on your face, it's a magical germ deterrent. Um, so that's the superstition part, but it, obviously it came from safety. If you're sick, you should not go in public coughing with an open mouth. That's basic. But it's not so much a problem in places where you can keep your distance from other people. But there's no space here. And if you go out in public, you have to wear a mask because you're going to be in people's faces. Because there's no space. So it's actually, a, it's actually about respecting Basically. the others. And um, I didn't know this when I first came to Taiwan. And I, um, I think... A lot of um, countries in Europe should learn something from that. States too. Yeah. So, of course, maybe the way Taiwanese people are doing it, it's a little bit too much. But um, I feel like if you're very sick and you're coughing and you're sneezing, just wear a mask. I know for sure that if I do that in Italy right now, they will look at me like, <laughs> like uh, what am Lepers. I doing? What, what are you doing? Why are you so weird? Why are you wearing a mask? You're fine. No, you're not fine. You're respecting the others. You're respecting people around you. Yep. You, don't, um, you don't want them to get sick. You're sick already. Just You, you want to stop the, the virus uh, on you. Right. <laughs> there's another reason why... There's another reason that I think we should talk about um, on why people... Why Taiwanese people wear a mask. Some Taiwanese people are shy and... They want to get, they don't, they don't feel like talking to people. They don't feel like showing their face to people. They feel safe wearing a mask. Um, I've seen a few people on the, the metro system. They have these big headphones and uh, they wear a mask and maybe they wear glasses too. Is there anyone underneath? Yeah, exactly. So I'm pretty sure some of them are sick and, and that's fine. But um, I know some people wear a mask every single day. Yeah. And uh, that's what I think it's is... just obsessive. Yeah, that's, that's just too much from my point of view. I originally, I didn't wear any masks at all because I thought it was stupid. I mean, I've been here for a few years and the coronavirus is a new thing. We've never had something like that scale before. And so if I went to teach, because I'm a teacher, I would go to school and my supervisor would ask me to put a mask on. I don't know if you've ever tried to teach in the first place, but try it and then try to teach English with a mask on. And it's really hard because no one can see your mouth. They can't copy the motions. Also, it feels weird to talk to someone with a mask. It's like talking to someone with sunglasses on. So I don't like it. I resist it. At this point, I've given in because I'm like, okay, this is realistic. It's getting serious, and um, yeah, and I'm I'm wearing a mask too every time I uh, go out. To be honest, if I'm in a park or and, and there's no people around, I just yeah. take it off. But yeah, if I'm taking the metro or the bus, I'm definitely wearing it now. And uh, as I said, I see people not wearing it, and uh, I'm just thinking, what are you doing? What are you thinking? You bought an expensive mask, though. Yeah. How much does it filter? Does it say on the box? It says. Let me check. So apparently. The mask that I bought, uh, so I paid around six euros for three masks. Perhaps. Yeah, so that's um, a two euro mask right there. Apparently, it's in Japanese, so we, we cannot, we're not really sure. But apparently, it filters 99% of the air coming in. 99%. I can confirm that it's definitely better than a normal surgical mask. And I'll tell you why. It covers the sides of your yeah. mouth as well, of your face. So I'm sure most of you guys have never worn a mask before. Yeah. So just to let you guys know um, what doctors are using, the surgical mask, it's, it's totally fine. It works, but 
the sides of it are open. The mm. air can come in through the sides. Why doctors are wearing those masks is because it's for it's for when it's like when they are talking and they don't want to spit on on a wound on on a patient. So that's why they are wearing those masks. Uh, but yeah, this mask that I I bought. Uh, it covers the sides of your face too, and that's probably why it filters 99% of the air coming in. Um, I don't know. I hope it works. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, we're not mask experts, but it's definitely better than a normal one, I guess. I've actually heard that the masks, like the one I have, the masks that most people use here actually are not fine enough to filter out the virus. Yeah. So I'm screwed, basically. What they do, though, is they protect you from sneezes. Actually, about that. And liquids. We watched Contagion and yeah. find out you touch your face 2,000 times a day. Yeah. And if you wear the mask, it basically protects you from yourself touching your face. That's good. It makes you more conscious. Yeah, it makes sense. So yeah. if someone sneezes next to you, yeah, you're probably going to die. But if you touch a bus pole and then you won't touch your face yep. after. Yeah. So we said that there are more people wearing masks, but what else is changing around where we're in Taipei right now? What's changing around Taipei, around Taiwan? Have uh, you seen something different? So we went to a museum the other day and before we went in, they used like a infrared thermometer yeah. on our foreheads to check and make sure that we were we didn't have a fever and we've never seen that before. That was a first for me. Pretty extreme. Yeah. It got me at the beginning. Like, what do you mean it got you? I felt it. Yeah, finally. Yeah, I was like, oh, it's happening. <laughs> oh, they are checking us. It's, it's the first time. Yeah. They, I mean, yeah, it's happening. I think that's it's it. It's real. We can feel it. Like, I'm not going to lie. If I travel, one of the first things I do in a new place is to like touch a door and then touch my face because I want to build up immunity. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> like, for the first time, I'm actually being precautious about, oh, I touched a door, I should probably wash my hands yeah. first. Or uh, sharing food with people, I'm more conscious now. That's true. Uh, it's a big thing here in Taiwan, people share food, uh, yeah. especially now in Chinese New Year. People eat together, they have a lot of uh, different dishes on the table and they just share. Just go at it with your chopsticks. Yeah. There's a lot of expats in Taiwan. Most of the expats in Taipei live in a place called Tianmu. And that's like the American village of Taipei. So you'll always, not just American, you'll always see Americans, Europeans, South Americans, Africans. They all live in that area. And they have one specific school that you can basically only go to if you're American or your parents are American. So it's a private school private. and it's... It's expensive. It's well expensive. Yeah. yeah. So it's for like rich, rich expats. Kids, diplomats, kids. Exactly. Stuff like Important that. Important people. <laughs> yeah. So that school shut down for the next week because honestly, I think it's because Americans are not used to this kind of panic level. You know, we, mm -hmm. we can't work in it. We would rather stay home. Yeah. I think uh, something like that never happened to to US, well, to Europe too. It's like, um, when was um, SARS? 2003, I think, I think it was. So. I remember it was not the news. I was in Italy back then. I remember it was not the news, but I didn't think it was a big deal. I, I don't think it was... It was something you see on the news and you say, oh, that's sad. Exactly. And then that's it. Um, so this American school, they decided to close, um, to stay closed because right now they are closed for Chinese New Year. So they, um, they extended this Chinese New Year for a week. I also think because the parents of these kids are, um, as you said, diplomats or, or people who travel a lot or businessmen, probably that's why they closed it because maybe a lot of them travel to China sure. or to other parts of the world. Anyway, they've been in airports, they've been around a lot of people. So they decided to close it. At least that's my view. That's my point of view on it. Yeah. Insightful. So John, have you talked with some Taiwanese people? What do they think about it? Are they worried? Are they scared? Are they taking it seriously? I think they're worried, but I don't get a sense of panic. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it either. There is one thing though that um, I want to say. So um, we said that that day, at, well, yesterday at the museum is is when it hit me that it's real. Mm. But also, I went to four different supermarkets yesterday to buy some masks because I only have three and they're not enough. And and they ran out in most of the supermarkets. Yeah, 
I'm sure if I go tomorrow morning very early, I can still find masks. It's not, the situation is not critical. But yeah, I finally found some masks in, in a supermarket. I mean, at the end I found some masks. But yeah, it's a sign. Yeah. It's a sign that people are um, a little bit worried. And the only thing we can do right now is buy masks and avoid public places. Taiwan is as big as my home state mm -hmm. in the US. It's so small and everyone's extremely organized. That's a nice thing, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, in America, you could drop a piece of toast on the floor and people would start having an argument about the idea of toast. I'm not complaining about it. I'm just saying there's always a battle of ideas. Here, everyone has to stay safe. That's just a fact. You know, there's nobody being like, oh, it's a hoax or I'm not going to wear a mask because they're just trying to control me. You know, everyone just does it because they're organized. I remember when the price of paper towels went up and no tissues, the price of bathroom tissues went up and I went to the store. I remember that. All the tissues were gone. Yeah. You couldn't find a single bag of tissues. So I think it's the same way. You know, when a restaurant gets popular, there's a line to the end of the street because mm -hmm. they, it goes onto the internet. Everyone in Taipei knows about it. And yeah. the next day it's sold out. Yeah, it is true. So information travels fast here. And then people don't criticize the information. They just go with it, which has pros and cons. In Agree. this case, it's a pro. Agree. Another thing that I want to say is um, that another thing that surprised me is that in Taiwan, there are only five cases yeah. so far. And that's um, why is it surprising? Because first of all, Taiwan and China are very close. A lot of people go home for Chinese New Year. They go back yep. to China. And also, let's not forget that Taiwan and China, they have economic ties. ties. You know, a lot of Taiwanese company, they export goods to China and a lot of Chinese company, they export goods to Taiwan. So it surprised me that we only have five cases. And for example, in Thailand, we have, we have 14. Yeah. Are surprising. you worried that sometimes one these people, maybe they just decided they're not going to get checked, that they're fine, that, that is just a cold? Yeah, that's not great. Yeah. Because I thought about it and I mean, what if it was you? What if you started having a cold right now? Right now in this frame of mind, I'd go to the clinic immediately. Okay. Maybe a couple years ago, I would just cough it off, which I of have course. done for my whole life. Yeah. Because a cold, you know, in English, it's just a cold. It's something you get when it's cold. But what I'm thinking is, think about all the, all the people around here. There are, stupid example, there are some very old people that will not go to the clinic because they just think it's not worth it. Well, they don't want to die there. It's bad chi if they die. Yeah, the yeah, 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 exactly. I'm just saying that that number is 100% not real. Mm, yeah. I mean, in all of these countries, I'm sure there's more than 6,000 people infected in China. Yeah. I'm 100% sure. It's just people that, you know, maybe it didn't hit them that bad and they're just waiting. Maybe they think if they don't go to the clinic, it'll go away. Yeah, you know. maybe. But yeah, th these numbers are, I mean, in my opinion, they're not correct. So I think the situation right now is that um, if you live in Asia, especially the north part of Asia, stay safe, avoid public places. Uh, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Yeah, that's definitely not going to happen. But try. Try stay indoor. Try stay in your house more. And, uh, and wear a mask. And that's it. If you live in Europe or US, situation is fine right now. Everything is apparently under control. So I, I wouldn't worry if I were you guys. But let's let's see what happens. It's uh, like we get we get uh, news every day. Yeah, on every channel. On every channel. Okay, so I feel like we've covered this uh, topic pretty well from mm. what we know right now. Our extremely um, professional opinion. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, it, it's just our point of view on it from two people that live in Taiwan. Yeah. So uh, we're not, we, we don't know much about what's happening in China, but we can uh, describe what we're going through here in Taiwan. I want to thank John for being here and helping me out. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs> that was Trump's voice, wasn't it? <coughs> I feel kind of sick. <laughs> Guys, this uh, was our first podcast. Uh, let oh. us know if you like it. And um, yeah, our first stop, it wasn't easy. It was real cheerful. <laughs> yeah, but we thought it was interesting. So um, thank you so much for listening and uh, I'll see you next time. And don't cough on people. Yeah. <laughs>